This is the next Penguin refrigeration troubleshooting video for 12 volt Danfoss BD35 or BD50 compressor fridges. In the earlier videos we did, we looked at the electrical supply into the fridge to make sure that the compressor was running and to work out whether there were any electrical faults stopping it from working properly. Having done all that, if you're then sure that your compressor is running but you're still getting no cooling in the plate, then we need to start looking at the refrigeration side of things. If your fridge has lost gas, you cannot refill it using gas from a local automotive store. That gas is for car air conditioning and may have different oils in it which won't be compatible with the Danfoss BD35. If you do do this, you may ruin the compressor. Best thing to do is to either send it back to us at Penguin Refrigeration and we can look at how we can best repair it for you or bring in a local refrigeration engineer. So the next scenario we're going to look at is when the compressor is running but the fridge is not performing as you think it should. So in this scenario, we're looking at the compressor with the system overcharged. This can often happen if you've had a fridge engineer on board, not used to dealing with these smaller compressors, uh, who's maybe added too much refrigerant into the system. To fully test this, the first thing we'd recommend is start with a defrosted fridge. So defrost your fridge, link out your thermostat by putting a link out between the C and T, as we've shown you in previous videos, so that the compressor is running all the time and you don't have a significant build-up of ice in the evaporator. Once you get to that point, there are a couple of things that we can look at. If this system was correctly charged, we would expect the temperature in the ice box to be around about minus 10, up or down. We can test this here with our infrared thermometer. Put that on, we're seeing around about 0 to minus 3. So not cold enough. If you don't have an infrared thermometer, a good way to test is to lick your finger and touch the plate. If the, fridge is, if the fridge is correctly charged, your finger will stick to the plate. Anything below minus six, really, your finger will start to stick. So this suggests to us that we've got a certain amount of cooling, but it's not getting cold enough to bring the fridge down to temperature efficiently. If this fridge would continue to be run like this, it would probably work. It, on its high setting it definitely wouldn't reach temperature so it wouldn't turn off so it's going to be running all the time. The other big thing you'll see with an overcharged fridge is the amount of power it draws. If you put too much refrigerant in it draws more amps. So again the power consumption goes up, the fridge isn't turning off so everything now is working against you. The final indicator, if you can see the compressor, you quite often see a turn on the return pipe of the compressor a build-up of ice. This build-up of ice is due to the excess refrigerant coming back down the return pipe and still evaporating off, so boiling off on here and freezing the pipe. All these signs show that this fridge is overcharged and to correct this you need to contact Penguin Refrigeration for details on how to sort your fridge out. So the final part of this video, I'm now going to show you what a correctly charged fridge should be like. So we've now put this back to the correct charge. So I'm going to open it up and show you what the ice box should be like. So now with my infrared, I'd expect to see minus 10 or below. So if I just check that, I've got minus 13 on that wall. I've got minus 16 at the bottom and minus 16 at the top. And if I lick my finger and touch the plate, my finger is now sticking to the plate. Now I need to check that all over the plate to make sure that the charge is everywhere on the plate, which it is. So now that plate ice box is running much, much colder than we saw before when the fridge was overcharged. So the next thing to check is whether I've still got any frost back on the return pipe. 
and as you can see this pipe now is completely dry so there is no overrun of refrigerant here again another sign that the charge is now correct the big winner now for me is that rather than drawing three amps or more as it was when it was overcharged we're now back to the right sort of charge of 2.5 amps 2.3 2.5 so this fridge will now run colder it will run more efficiently because it's running at less amps and obviously when I plug it back into the thermostat it will turn off and on and cycle correctly. This is a properly charged fridge.